Hello, my name is Bill Kinney, and this is the first of what I hope will be many videos helping people study for Actuarial Exam 1, also called Exam P on Probability. Now, if you don't want to be an actuary, it's okay. These videos will still help you learn about probability. It's just that many of the questions will be phrased in terms of insurance, which is an area where many actuaries work. Um, though not all of them, you can see this particular question is not related to insurance. So you're still going to get a lot out of this, so stick with me, okay? Some of you know that I've already made many videos on Actuarial Exam 2, also called Exam FM on Financial Math. Here in March of 2019, I'm not done with that series. I still have more videos to make, but I wanted to get going on these Exam P questions as well. I also blog about these things. In the, a blog I started here in 2019, it's at infinity is really big. Dot com. I'm going to typically write at least one short blog post about each video that I make, plus more, including this one, maybe not today, it might be tomorrow. Um, and there will be other things on that blog, including, for example, this summer I'll be starting to write about linear algebra. So that's a place you can go to get a lot of this content. Video number one, you can see, is from SOA Sample Exam P Questions. It's something that you can find online. SOA stands for Society of Actuaries. Most of the questions I do, I think I will take from that sample list, but sometimes I might take them from a textbook. I've got a book here uh, by Asimo and Maxwell. I might take some questions from this book, but for the most part, we'll take them from the sample exam P questions. The problem description is what's stated first here, and it looks kind of complicated. The problem itself is not quite as complicated as it, as it seems in this description. It says, use a Venn diagram, which is just a tool, to break down and solve a classification problem involving percentages. The problem itself ends right here. However, I modify the problem. I'm adding an extra question because the problem statement itself doesn't involve probability. But I want this video series to be about probability. So I'm also going to add this extra question. I'm going to introduce the basic ideas of randomness and probability in it. And here's a little hint. The answer to these two questions is going to be the same. The way you interpret them, though, the way you think about them is a little different. Okay, that's the key distinction. All right, so let's take a look at the problem statement itself now. We've got a survey of a group of people and their viewing habits for sports. You've got seven pieces of information. It seems kind of overwhelming at first. We need to take it step by step and break it down and use this Venn diagram idea. You're told, first of all, that 28% of these people over the last year watched gymnastics. Okay? Then 29% watched baseball. Then 19% watched soccer. In other words, football, of course, in every country but the United States, it's called football. 14% watched gymnastics and baseball. Emphasis on the word and, that's important here. 12% watched baseball and soccer. 10% watched gymnastics and soccer, and finally, 8% watched all three sports, gymnastics, baseball, and soccer. Our goal is to calculate the percentage of the group that watched none of these three sports during the last year. And again, the extra question, what is the probability that a randomly chosen member of this group watched none of the three sports during the last year. And again, the answer to this is going to be the same as the answer to the first question. All right, so what is a Venn diagram? Well, a Venn diagram um, oftentimes is drawn as a group of circles or blobs, sometimes in a box. I like drawing in a box, so I will first try to draw a rectangle here that's representing my box. Okay, there's our rectangle, our box. And in fact, you might even use your imagination and pretend this is like the floor of a gymnasium or something. And you've got people here, these people, and they're going to stand in certain areas of this gymnasium based on what they watched in the last year. That's a way to conceptualize what's going on here. You want to make three blobs or circles for these three sports. Let's put the gymnastics over here making it kind of look like a circle, but of course I can't draw a perfect circle. You might want to just more in general think of it as being a blob. I'll call it G for gymnastics. 
then we want to have baseball. Some people watch both, right? There's overlap between the people who watch gymnastics and the people who watch baseball. So if somebody watched both gymnastics and baseball during the last year, they want to stand in both circles. And finally, you've got the blob or circle for soccer. Of course, again, that's called football in every country but the United States, down there. All right. Now, it's tempting to think that you should go through this list of information in the order that's given. However, if it's phrased this way, in this kind of problem, you want to start from the bottom and work your way up. You want to start with the, mo the information that is most specific, so to speak. Um, in this case, 8% watched all three sports. That's the most specific. It's the most detailed, you might say. You're saying those people watched all three. Put an 8 inside all three circles. You can also put an 8% if you like, or a 0.08, 8% by definition means 8 per 100, 0 0.08. So whenever you convert a percentage to a decimal like this, sometimes the teacher might have told you, well, just get rid of the, the percent sign and move the decimal to the left two places. That's true. You might have wondered why. The reason is percent means per 100. So 8% literally means 8 per 100, like this. Okay, I put a percent sign there, but I, I think with the rest of these numbers, I'm not going to bother putting a percent sign. <coughs> um, so we've taken care of the last piece of information. Let's cross things off as we use them. We'll continue working backwards. 10% watch gymnastics and soccer. Those are the people that are in both the red circle here and the purple circle. We've already accounted for 8% of them. So don't put a 10 here, put a 2 instead. Put whatever number you need to put there so that these two numbers add up to 10%. Okay? That's important to realize that these numbers that I'm going to label in each section of this diagram are not necessarily the numbers that are shown up here, but numbers that I have to figure out. We've taken care of that now. Continue backwards. 12% watch baseball and soccer, the green and the purple. We already have accounted for 8%, so we need four more percentage points worth of people. Put a 4 there so that 8 plus 4 is 12, and we've used that. Of course, you could literally imagine these as being 100 people, and so you'd have 8 people standing in here, 2 people standing in here, and 4 people standing in, in here, if that's helpful. All right, just continue working backwards. We're going to need all the pieces of information to figure out the question in the end. 14% watch gymnastics and baseball. You've already accounted for eight of those. So put six here. Eight plus six is 14. We've taken care of that piece of information. 19% total watch soccer. They are in the purple circle. We've already accounted for people in these three regions. So we need to put a number in this region here so that all four numbers add up to 19. 2 plus 8 plus 4 is already 14, so we need a 5 here so that all four numbers add up to 19, and we've taken care of that piece of information. Almost done. 29% watch baseball. They're in the green. We've already taken care of 18% of them, so we have 11% left over. Finally, 28% watch gymnastics. They are in the red circle. We've already accounted for 2 plus 8 plus 6 of them, 16%, so we have 12% left over. Okay? <clears throat> Are we done? No. We haven't solved the question yet. Again, the goal is to calculate the percentage that watch none, that are not standing in any of these circles. Since the numbers that I've labeled here represent each of these pieces individually, they will add up um, to a certain percentage in this case that I am short of 100%. In other words, whatever these add up to, take 100 minus that number to get the people, the number of people or the percentage of people that are standing outside of all three circles, meaning they watch none of those three sports. Okay, I'll do it in my head here. 12 plus 6 is 18, plus 11 is 29, plus another 10 there for those two is 39, plus 4 is 43, plus 5 is 48. Outside here goes 100 minus 48, 52, 
And again, that is representing a percent here, though, again, I said you can imagine it as representing a number of people if there are 100 people total. So the answer is indeed 52%. And that is answer D on the sample exam questions. Okay. And that indeed is also the answer to the extra question, was the probability that a randomly chosen member of this group watched none of the three sports during the last year? What's the dis distinction between percentage and probability? Well, nothing in terms of the answer. However, there is a difference in perspective. When you talk about probability, where you are assessing the likelihood or chances of something happening, you don't know if it's happened or not. You're not just describing some data. You are imagining that you are about to do something. In this case, I'm about to randomly, somehow, pick one person from this group. And I'm wondering, what are the chances that that person watched none of those three sports? It's a slightly better than 50-50 chance. And that could affect things like if you were going to bet on the outcome, how will, much you'd be will, willing to bet. Okay, So it's, it's a change in perspective. You're, you're thinking about the future. You are about to do something randomly and you're trying to assess the likelihood. When the probability is close to 100%, you're almost certain that the event is going to happen. If it's close to 0%, you're almost certain that the event is not going to happen. So that's the answer to this question. Many times at the end of these videos, I will try to do something extra. Not to just, you know, we've already solved the problem, but I'd like to do something extra. Uh, oftentimes that extra thing will involve using a computer program called Mathematica. That's actually what I do have here. Many people don't have Mathematica, but it can do some pretty cool things and it will help us understand lots of concepts more deeply. Here I'm doing it just to illustrate something. One thing that I'm illustrating is that you can just you can make a diagram like this that I drew by hand. You see the answer here. Um, but more importantly, conceptually speaking, I purposely tried in this Mathematica document, I'm going to show you the code here, to make the relative sizes of these different regions here uh, approximately correct. In fact, this box here is the unit square going from the origin to the point 0.10 to the point 0.11 to the point 0.01 and back down to the origin. It's got an area of one unit and I tried to make the areas that you see here labeled at, with percentages be approximately correct. Okay, And you can see, for example, the number of people, the percentage of people who watch soccer which was 19% total, was, is smaller than the percentage of people that watch gymnastics and baseball. Those circles are bigger here. I purposely tried to make these approximately right in terms of area. And I think that's a good thing conceptually. It's not necessary to do to solve problems. But conceptually speaking, when we think about Venn diagrams, to try to imagine those areas as being uh, reflecting the true answers to those different regions in this case, that'll be a helpful conceptual thing as we solve harder problems. If you're interested, here's some Mathematica code that I used to help me make the diagram. I was thinking about trying to figure out how the radius of a circle depended on its area, and this uh, function would compute that for me. That helped me figure out the radii of the circle that I needed. I also wanted to figure out where did these circles meet, the red and the blue circles here, and so this content here helped me ultimately figure out where those met. Um, if you know Mathematica, you could try to figure out what, what I'm doing here. I'm essentially solving some equations algebraically. I used calculus integral to help me calculate an area. In this case, this is the area between uh, the red and the blue that's in common here that's about 14%. And you can see this integral turns out to be close to 14%. And this is the code that actually helped me make the graphics itself if you're interested in knowing how to make the graphs on, math, on Mathematica using the math. okay, Obviously not the best way to make a nice drawing. There's a lot of work that went into that. But if you're interested, then you know.